And so Lisa, thanks for doing this interview. And um, um, there's a lot of people out there wondering about this vocation of the single life. It's not talked about all that often. And so I'm gonna ask you like the first question I usually ask most people, and that is what first drew you to living out this vocation? I guess my answer to that is I wasn't first drawn to this vocation. I looked into becoming a nun when I was in university, mm -hmm. and certainly in high school I thought that I would be married. Mm -hmm. So as I looked at both of those vocations, I find myself living this one. Mm -hmm. And uh, as far as what drew me here, there's always been a seed mm -hmm. planted in me interested in the single life and serving God through being single. Probably that seed was planted by my mom. Mm -hmm. who's a, devout Catholic who modeled lots of things for me. Um, now, did you always see yourself as uh, the department head here? I, know, I remember thinking when I was in 12th grade that I'd love to be the religion consultant for the board. And then my life took me in a very different direction. I, there were no jobs in teaching when I first graduated from teacher's college and I went overseas and taught in international schools there. Wow. And, but I was definitely called home. There were some interesting events in, uh, surrounding how I came home. Yeah. I was in South Africa on a Global Concerns mission trip mm. and uh, I was praying a lot. Mm -hmm. And I remember saying to my, I was on an animal spotting trip with the kids and I said, you know, God, if, if I'm supposed to go home, let me see a zebra. And as soon as the thought was out of my head, the kids were shouting, stop, stop. And I wondered why and right beside us within a meter there was a zebra. And I thought, you know, it's not going to come any stronger, Lisa, it's time to go home. And I didn't know that I wanted to teach at that point anymore. I thought I would like to open the spa, mm -hmm. but my mother had submitted my application to the board mm -hmm. and I was hired at a time when it was quite difficult to get hired and then the path just sort of brought me here. So looking back at that path and uh, how you were led to different events in your life and living out this vocation to the single life, uh, is there anything that stands out with you, for you that uh, you, know, you look back and you say, you know, I, I really love you know, this vocation? Yeah, the best part of being single is, is the time that I get to spend with other people's children whether they're my friends, children, or students here. Mm -hmm. And I've had many opportunities to give something to a child that their parents couldn't give them. And it's such a blessing when the parent comes to me and thanks me, mm -hmm. says, you know, thank you for being a part of our life, yeah. because these are things that we couldn't give our child. And that, that makes me feel really, really good, because I've touched not only the child, but the family too. Wow. Okay, well there's lots of young people out there actually watching this video and uh, you know tapping into vocationculture.ca and they're discerning their vocation. Is there any advice that you could give to them along the way? My advice is to pray and mm. to, it's, it's difficult I suppose to know when it's your head talking and when it's the voice of God talking but certainly the magic that's become a part of my life has come when I've been devoted to prayer. Well, thank you so much for taking the time out to do this interview. Uh, I wish you God's blessings as you continue to live out this vocation to the single life. Thank, thank you, Lisa. You. Thank you.